Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. Today is March 27th, a Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday, and during Holy Week, it is also called Fig Tuesday because this was the day that Jesus Christ cursed and caused the fig tree to die and wither because it was fruitless. And the reason he did this was it was a sign and the fig tree is commonly known as a symbol for Israel. And it was a way for him to show a sign and a warning for the nation that was not producing fruit. So I've been curious if we would see interesting events happening during Holy Week. And so far, we definitely have. So we have our prophet, President Nelson, and the apostles telling us and exhorting us to study and to understand Holy Week. So if we understand that, I think we'll find some interesting things are happening this week. So I'm excited to show you guys these very odd connections that are kind of mind-blowing. So we have the broken Baltimore Bridge on Fig Tuesday, sign of a fruitless nation. We're going to talk about this 12-8 and how it ties into Leave the World Behind. So first of all, fig trees are a symbol of Israel. So the broken bridge, the name of that bridge was the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So Francis Scott Key, he was the man who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. And you could think of the Star Spangled Banner as a symbol of America. That is the quintessential American song. In fact, Francis Scott Key, an American lawyer, he was on board a ship negotiating a prisoner exchange, and he was not allowed to disembark when an attack began on Fort McHenry in the Baltimore Harbor. So as he watched the battle, he was moved to write the poem, which later became the Star Spangled Banner, the quintessential American song. We also know that back in the days of Jesus, fig trees provided food. They would fed people then, and today... We're generally fed by the supply chain. So we had a supply chain cargo accident, um, the destruction of a source of food, whereas on Fig Tuesday of Holy Week, it was this destruction of the source of food as a sign for the nation as well. So here at the bottom, you can see what happens on Tuesday in Holy Week. Holy Tuesday is also known as Fig Tuesday as it commemorates the day Jesus returned to Jerusalem from Bethany, passing a barren fig tree on the way, which he used as an example to teach his disciples. So I noticed some interesting connections that I'm going to share with you guys today. So in the Leave the World Behind movie, this was a movie made by Obama. And it was aired on Netflix starting on 12-8. So that was December 8th, 12-8. I noticed that the ship crashed at 12-8. 1 to 8 a.m. exactly on Fig Tuesday of Holy Week. I thought that was pretty interesting. So the crash was actually 128 days after Biden's birthday and 128 days before Francis Scott Key's birthday. So I'm seeing a theme of one, two, eight. So in the Leave the World Behind, this was the Obama movie that aired on Netflix on 12 8, and the ship crashed at 1 28 a.m. exactly on Fig Tuesday of Holy Week. So you can see down here the bottom that Joe Biden was born on November 20th. And so if you add 128 days, that's from and including, and then to and including these two dates, it's exactly 128 days. And 128 days after this accident of the Francis Scott Key Bridge being destroyed, if you had 128 days, it is Francis Scott Key's birthday. August 1st. 
I had actually previously done a video about this because so many people were talking about this as why leave the world behind viewers think the Obamas are sending a warning with a movie because this was just unreal and so strange to have a former president as an executive producer of an apocalypse type movie. And this movie was about cyber attacks and the power going out and a big ship crashing and there were a lot of weird things happening here and it came out on 12 8. so i'm sharing this message so i noticed later that i had shared this message at 9 11 on the day of the accident i have a friend who we have a little chat group and they sent me this message about what had happened and i had said i mentioned your channel in this and your eclipse chart and this ended up being way too long i crammed so much into this interview so here yesterday not yesterday but march 25th the day before the boat accident i did a video with christian homestead and it was very long but i was talking about some interesting themes including the rainbow and numbers that are linked to warnings and things like that and this was the day in the curtain temple and this was the day before this happened. And so I said, after I shared that with my friends, I said, so when I heard about this boat, my first thought was leave the world behind because I can't think of any other time when a giant cargo ship has crashed into anything. And that was kind of the big scene in the movie, as you can see here, a big ship crashing. So my second thought was about the timing to see if there were any connections. And I said, if I had to guess, I'd say five months after the movie came out just because the five years being a time of warning we have the five years being the samuel lamanite warning and also linked to grace this concept of grace it's also grace and kind of warning and destruction but primarily it's linked to grace and when i looked it up sure enough it was five months exactly so the boat crashed at exactly 1 20 a.m 128 a.m. right after five months from October 25th. So basically at 128 a.m. on the first day of the next month. So you had the five months of grace. And I looked up who owns the cargo ship that hit the Baltimore Bridge. It is Grace Ocean Private Company. So leave the world behind. You can see here that it had its world premiere at the AFI Fest on October 25th, 2023. So five month grace warning. So the name of the cargo ship that crashed is Dolly. So the connections just continue and it gets pretty crazy from here. So <laughs> the name of the ship is Dolly and specifically the ship was named after the artist Salvador Dolly. There's so many links connecting this movie accident with a boat to this real boat accident, and it all ties into this artist Dolly. So the name on the ship you can see right here is White Lion. So in the movie, Leave the World Behind, the name of the boat is White Lion. And um, so Dolly actually has a sister ship, Suzanne, and they were christened with the names of Salvador Dolly and Paul Suzanne. So just kind of showing you here just on Wikipedia that this was specifically named after the artist Dolly. So remember this, this ship only the world behind is named White Lion. And then we have the ship named Dolly. So Salvador Dolly had two famous paintings among some others, but one of them is called The Broken Bridge and the Dream. So you have Dolly that made this broken bridge art and we have the real Dolly ship that crashed in and created a broken bridge. And then in Leave the World Behind, the boat's name is White Lion. So Dolly has this lion art, and it's commonly called the White Lion. So when people recreate it, it's the White Lion Dolly art print. So we have the White Lion here in Leave the World Behind, a movie produced by a former president that people wondered if it was some sort of warning. And here we go, this connection to Dolly and the White Lion. And the broken bridge in the dream is just 
wild. So the official description kind of interpretation of this, if you go to the Salvador website where it's all about his art, it says, in his dream, the ruined bridge transforms into a stairway upon which allegorical figures drift upward towards heaven. And now remember the name of this Obama movie was Leave the World Behind. So March 26th, fig tree sign. So number one, the day after U.S. breaks with Israel on ceasefire. So it's very interesting that this, what I can only call a cursed event, occurred the day after U.S. makes a big call, an extraordinary thing. U.S. break with Israel on U.N. ceasefire vote triggers. So we left Israel hanging. Israel is not happy with the U.S., so they canceled their Washington visit after U.S. allows U.N. Gaza ceasefire resolution. So we had that happening the day before, the same day that we had a blood moon over the U.S., and the same day as the cleansing of the Temple Day of Holy Week. So Monday of Holy Week is cleansing of the Temple Day, and we also had the opening of the Kirtland Temple that is linked specifically in scripture, DNC 117 to cleansing of the temple. So U.S. abstention from U.N. Security Council resolution on Gaza. And if you look at these dates connected to leave the world behind, we have this five months grace warning. We had the 128 number, 128. And I wondered, well, what about November 22nd, 2023? And I was not disappointed because on... Um, I looked back and I had done a previous video. I had felt like this was a sign. This was another bridge sign on November 22nd, 2023. So in the news, it said because of the situation on the Rainbow Bridge, the Peace Bridge is closed. And when this event happened, it just really felt like a sign to me. So we have the New York vehicle explosion at the Rainbow Bridge border crossing and two dead. So in the news, it said, I'm closely monitoring this situation on the Rainbow Bridge. Because of the situation on the Rainbow Bridge, um, the Peace Bridge is now closed. So avoid the area. And there were a couple of people that were killed. And so it's just very unusual. And in that, my past video, I talked about how the day before we had this Rainbow Bridge accident, we had this rainbow sign in the sky. So we had been talking a lot about November 21st because this day is linked to blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to 1,305 and 30 days. So that was connected to the October 7th date that we had talked about a lot. And this being a blessed day, we had a rainbow sign, which is a sign of Zion and blessings. So we had on Pentecost, it was here. In the church, that was the day that we did the challenge, that we finished the 21-day challenge, and I had posted that picture of that beautiful rainbow, and then it was the forehead of the woman on the day of the ring of fire eclipse that was connected to the October 7th day, and then at the heart of the woman on November 21st. So you have that rainbow sign in the heavens, and then the following day, this rainbow bridge accident. So March 26th, we had a fig Tuesday bridge accident sign the day after the Monday cleansing of the temple. So we had the Kirtland temple that opened and the blood moon and that sign. And then we had this bridge accident. And on November 22nd, we had a rainbow bridge accident sign the day after the rainbow sign in the heavens. So if you're not understanding how the Kirtland temple is linked to the cleansing of the temple, um, just remember, first of all, that Monday is the cleansing of the temple day. And if you go to Doctrine and Covenants 117, 16, it says, and again, verily I say unto you, let all my servants in the land of Kirtland remember the Lord their God and my house also to keep and preserve it holy and to overthrow the money changers in mine own due time, saith the Lord. Even so, amen. So that's not a knock at the people that held the Kirtland temple before. It just was not in the right hands of the people. It was uh, being used. It was charging people money to come to the temple. And that is no longer the case as of March 25th. So we have the teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith. He said, I know that Zion in the due time of the Lord will be redeemed, but how many will be the days of her purification, tribulation, and affliction? 
So I thought it'd be interesting to look and see what the prophet and apostles have said about bridges lately. And there are a few different things, but this one really just stood out to me. And this was comparing Zion to a bridge, October, 2021, the love of God. And we have Elder Christofferson, and he said, Professor Hugh Nibley once noted that the kingdom of God cannot endure if it indulges even the smallest sin. The slightest taint of corruption means that the other world would be neither incorruptible nor eternal. The tiniest flaw in a building institution, code, or character will inevitably prove fatal in the long run of eternity. And it shows here in the footnotes, he's quoting from Hugh Nibley, where he says, It, an everlasting Zion, can no more carry on forever laden with defects and imperfections than a bridge or tower can stand forever weakened by even minor flaws in construction. The commandments of God are strict because his kingdom and its citizens can stand only if they consistently reject evil and choose good without exception. The Savior declares straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And I, the Lord, cannot look upon sin with the least degree of allowance. Elder Jeffrey R. Holland observed, Jesus clearly understood what many in our modern culture seem to forget, that there is a crucial difference between the commandment to forgive sin, which he had an infinite capacity to do, and the warning against condoning it, which he never, ever did even once. So interesting connections. You can decide if it means anything, but... You can definitely remember the words of Elder Christofferson, and hopefully those connections will help you to remember to do your best to keep the commandments. And just a reminder, we are working on a goal to finish reading the Book of Mormon by April 8th, or read the Book of Mormon every day up until April 8th. So thank you for joining me to he here on Christian Fire Poppy today. Let's bloom despite the doom and gloom like a true fire poppy. A Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion after world chaos fires. Join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly into the second coming of Jesus Christ.